A while back, I was trying to update a game that I wanted to play, but instead of it updating, I got a message that said I was out of storage. Unfortunately, my PC had ran out of storage, and I had a few options. I could just delete some old files that I didn't need anymore, but I didn't want to do that because, who knows, maybe one day I'll need one of the 22,000 files in my downloads folder. I could also just buy a new SSD or hard drive, but I didn't feel like doing that either, since that would cost money and I'm pretty broke already. Then I thought of a better idea. Pretty much every social media site is just a bunch of free cloud storage with extra features on top of it. And better yet, these sites charge a total of $0 to upload as much data as you want to them. Surely I could just pick a site to use, and then write a program to upload and download all my files at will. The first site that came to mind was the one you're watching this video on right now, YouTube. I mean, you can upload massive videos onto this site, and there are plenty of tools available to download them back to your machine. The only problem with YouTube is that you can only upload videos, which meant if I wanted to store any other files, I would have to develop a program that could convert any files data into videos, and then reconvert it back into the original files. This would in theory work because all files are just a bunch of data anyway, but I changed my mind with using YouTube because I was worried the video compression would cause issues for my program reading the data that I converted into a video. My second option was Discord. You can upload pretty much any file to Discord. Discord as long as it's under 25 megabytes. This is fine for small files, but what if I wanted to upload something bigger? I decided that my program needed to be able to take a file, split it into a bunch of chunks under 25 megabytes, and then upload them to Discord. These chunks could then be downloaded and reassembled into the original file later. Now that I knew exactly what my program needed to do, I began work. The first thing I needed to do was make a program that could read a file's binary data. Luckily, Python has a built-in function for this, so this was really easy to do. Then I needed to save this binary data to something that I could upload to Discord. I could just send the binary data as plain text in chunks of 25 megabytes to Discord, but I wanted to actually be able to visualize the data being sent. I decided it would be pretty cool to convert the binary data into images. How I did this is my program splits the original file's binary data into chunks small enough to upload to Discord, then it creates images out of the binary data where each pixel in the image represents some data. Over 16 million different colors can be stored per pixel, which is equivalent to 24 bits of data or 3 bytes. Therefore, in one 1920 by 1080 pixel image, you can store around 6 megabytes of binary data. When my program converts some binary data into an image, it looks like just a bunch of static, but it's actually representing a bunch of data that can be stored on Discord servers for free, giving us free cloud storage. After I got the image conversion working, I needed a way to upload these files to Discord. I could just upload them from my own account, but this would be annoying and a waste of time. Instead, I created a Discord bot whose purpose it was to upload the image files for me. First, I had to remember how to write a Discord bot in Python because it had been ages since I last made one. After I got the bot to run, I programmed it to automatically upload the image files generated by my program. Then the bot saves the URLs of these images to a text file so I can access them later to download when I want to access my files. Now my program could upload files of any size to Discord, but there was no way to re-download the images and then convert them back into their original file. So I made another Python script that could take the text document with the image URLs in it and download the images from it. Then the script runs through each of these images and for each pixel it gets the color information and converts it back into binary code. After collecting binary code from every single pixel of the image downloaded, the program finally has all the data of the original file. Then it recreates the file from that data and saves it to my computer. The program currently worked fine and files of any size could be uploaded and downloaded from Discord servers without issues. The only problem is that it's a little annoying to have to run this program through the terminal, so I made a basic website to control the program from which doesn't look amazing but it works. There is a small oversight with this entire project, and that's the fact that anything uploaded to Discord is publicly available and can be downloaded by anyone. If someone joins my Discord server for example, they could easily save all the images that contain one of my files, and if they knew how the binary data was stored in them, they could decode it and reassemble the original file. I could get around this by making the Discord server private, but the files uploaded are still available for anyone to see if they have the URL to them. Honestly though, this project wasn't actually made for storing files because I wouldn't trust Discord not to delete the images anyway. Plus, the upload speeds are super slow because 1. My Wi-Fi is garbage and 2. Converting binary data into an image is painfully slow anyway, so uploading anything through my program is slow no matter how fast your internet is. This project was more of just a fun experiment to show how this is technically possible, even though there's really no reason to actually do something like this. If you're still watching, you clearly enjoyed this video and you'll probably like my other videos too, so you should definitely subscribe for more content like this. I've been pretty busy with schoolwork lately because I'm on my last year of school which is why I haven't been uploading much recently but I do have some video ideas in mind for the future so subscribe if you want to see those. Anyway that's the end of the video so until next time goodbye.